some ventures or projects, we may say, they're just not worth the effort. But when Yeshua saw you, he decided that you were indeed worth all of his effort. Hi, this is Barry Phillips with 10-Minute Torah, day number one of the Torah portion, Kitetse. This is found beginning in Deuteronomy, Devarim, Devarim, chapter 21, verse 10. When you go out to fight against your enemies, and Yahweh your Elohim shall give them into your hand, and you shall take them captive, and see among the captives a woman fair of form, and shall delight in her, and take her for your wife, then you shall bring her home to your house. She shall shave her head and trim her nails, put aside the mantle of her captivity, and shall dwell in your house, and mourn her father and her mother a month of days. And after that, you shall go into her and be her husband, and she shall be your wife. So what kind of war are we talking about here? There are obligatory wars. These are the wars that Yah says that they must fight, Israel must fight against the inhabiting peoples of the land of inheritance. So the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and all those ites peoples, they are to be driven out of the land and they are not to take captives from them, but they are to completely annihilate them. They failed to honor that command and it came back to bite them. The command of Yah was that these people in particular, they all need to be completely consumed and destroyed because they were so given over to the paganism, the demonism, the, uh, the mixture of their DNA, and that's another teaching some other time, but they were a polluted, degenerate people. I'll just leave it at that. That had to go. Once the land had been settled, then there were optional wars where a bordering nation or some area may attack Israel and they retaliate or they may invade, invade to enlarge their borders. Under these situations, um, there could be captives taken. The situation is this, a woman uh, of a foreign culture seeing that her land is being invaded, seeing that they're about to be overtaken, may present herself in her most beautiful array, her most seductive self, so as to attract the attention of the invaders that may perhaps they would want to take her to be a, a wife or to be a companion rather than she just simply be slaughtered among everyone else. It was brutal warfare in those days. Yah says, okay, okay, okay. If you see someone of a foreign culture, of a foreign land, and you just have to have her, then you may have her, but only after a process whereby she comes to your house, she takes off the clothes of seduction or of allure, she dresses more commonly, her hair is shaved, her nails are trimmed, and she's allowed to mourn the loss of her people, her family, her culture, her country for a month. Now, when the warrior, the soldier, saw her on the battlefield, she might have appeared quite glamorous. Seeing her balded, reduced to more common clothing, and crying for 30 days may take out some of the yearning and desire from him, and he may realize maybe this isn't such a good idea. Now, he can't shame her. She, he can't sell her as a slave. He has to be kind to her. But the understanding is it is a process engaged whereby she adopts his culture, not the other way around. The goal here is to convert the captive to being a part of Am Israel. Now, you and I are not engaged. Uh, we are not in a, a part of a militaristic effort here. That understood, we do have a nature of warfare that is spiritual. When we're fighting for, as was recently said in a political speech, for the soul of our country, 
Now, you may agree or disagree as to what side one should stand on that argument. The soul of our nation is at stake. There are those who say, well, America is no longer worth fighting for. We're here. As long as we're here, we have a duty and a responsibility to pray and to intercede for Yah's favor on the land in which we dwell, even if it is an exile. That's my opinion. Battling for the soul of this nation, taking captives, we pray for people's lives. We pray for their souls. We pray that they be converted. The goal is not to adopt their culture in order to attract them, but rather bring them into the full embrace of what it means to be covenant on Israel. We've not done really well, very well at that over the last few decades. We've been more apt to adopt culture around us in order to be more amiable, agreeable, and inviting. That's not what Yah's asking. We're not to cease being who Yah has called us to be. When Yeshua redeemed us, he brought us out of our sinful, paganistic, cultural past where we embrace things that he called sin. We've turned from those, or we should have turned from those. To embrace his culture, his language, his identity, his worldview, his future, and his kingdom. We are no longer living according to world values, but rather the values of our Messiah. That process has taken time. We've mourned our past. We've gotten over our issues, or at least we're working through them. Uh, we've changed our outward appearances to some degree. Um, we, we've changed the way that we go about our lives. Why? Because our husband, our bridegroom, our Messiah is not of this present world. No longer are we. Let's face it, America is never going to be Israel. It will never be Israel. In the kingdom, America will still be America. There's nothing wrong with being American. I happen to like some cultural things about America. I like some of the sports. I like the Labor Day cookouts. I like uh, the work ethic that at least some generations have had. I like uh, you know, uh, muscle cars from the 60s and 70s. There are some American cultural things that are awesome. There are some things that are incredibly sinful and debauched. Being an American is not a bad thing. Even in the kingdom, we will retain, I believe, some elements of where we came from because he's bringing us from every tribe, tongue, and nation that is that we're going to be this incredible melting pot of peoples that have signed on to the covenant and are going to serve the Messiah in the land in his kingdom. That being said, we are understanding that we are being converted. Yah is not going to allow us to be seductive or seduced by this present world. He is not going to allow us to retain a previous identity to the exception of the one that he is offering. The culture of Yeshua is that which we're looking toward. Now, Yeshua was one who experienced life as a Jew. There's a lot of Jewish things that we may embrace, but we will never be Jews because we were never born Jews. There's nothing wrong with being Jewish. It's an awesome thing. But our understanding is there is a Hebrew culture. There is a Torah culture. This word is teaching us how to follow after the heart, the character, the personality, and the worldview of Yeshua. That's our goal. That's what we're after. We've been taken Thank you, Father, for taking us, for choosing us, for finding us, for rescuing us from the battlefields of the Spirit. Now enable us, O oh Yah, to become 
acceptable as your bride. May it happen today. We'll see you again tomorrow. To then, shalom. Thank you.